Hello, this is Siva Patnala from PR3 Systems. This is going to be a short video to give you some insights on IIDR. We'll talk a little bit about the program and give a short demo as well. So, let's get started. What is IIDR? IIDR stands for IBM's Infosphere Data Replication. This technology will help you replicate the data across systems. Now let's talk about some of the big features of this project. It can capture inserts, it can capture updates, and it can capture deletes, all of which you would regularly want to capture depending on your various business purposes. Some of the other features it has are a centralized platform. So you have one single place to control your replication. It's also capable of handling multiple different types of sources and targets. Some of the databases for sources and targets include DB2, SQL Server, Oracle, etc. Some of the targets include Teradata, Flat Files, Data Stage, Netiza. It can be used on different environments such as Windows, Unix, Linux. Now, you may be wondering what type of replication IIDR uses. Well, the answer to that is it does log-based replication. IIDR is a very low impact program on the whole database itself, which is very helpful because it will not hinder your or your employees' abilities to do their work. It only sends the data which has, which has been changed or is new instead of sending all data, which is very important because it reduces the network bandwidth, a big reason why it is low impact. Now IIDR has three different components. The main component being change data capture. The next two are SQL replication and Q replication. So let's get on to the demo now where you can actually see IIDR in action. But before I go on, I do want to mention we have a course dedicated specifically just to the subject IIDR, where you'll be able to master all the concepts that we were mentioning before. Our training includes everything you need to get a running start with IIDR, including things such as labs, videos, and a virtual instance for you to do your work on. So if you have any questions, feel free to contact us at PR3 Systems. Now, I don't want to hold you guys any longer, so here comes the demo. I hope you guys enjoy. Thank you for your time. Hello. Welcome to lab number 13, where we would be activating the replications which we created in the previous lab. So for this, I'm going to go to Management Console, which I have opened over here, and I'm going to go to my Monitoring tab. So the Monitoring tab is where I would be controlling my replication, and I would also be monitoring my subscriptions. So to, to start the replication, first let's click on purchasing. Let's right click on this and click on start refresh. Now this should show you all the tables which would be refreshed and click on OK. Now if you notice, the status just changed over here to one running on refresh. Now when the refresh completes, it is going to go back to an active state. As you already know, refresh is a periodic update where you capture the changes as from whatever was changed last time. So refresh is not real time. So in case you make any changes and you run the refresh again, then I'd, uh, uh, CDC would capture the changes. We have not done any changes to the source. Now let's just try running the refresh again. You can see the message which says there is nothing available for, for refresh in the selected subscriptions because we have not done any changes from the last time. Now let's do a change. Let's start a ref, uh, the replication for sales. Now if you remember it, sales was defined as a real-time replication where we would be continuously mirroring. So let's start and let's say start mirroring. Okay. So when we do a mirroring, first thing, uh, if we have not done a refresh on that particular subscription, what is going to happen is first, a full refresh would occur so that the database is brought in sync with what is in the source and then there would be a continuous mirror which would start. So that's why you get the warning which says there are 19 tables that will be refreshed before the mirroring starts. 
Now when it comes to mirroring, you also have the option of a continuous mirror where the replication is forever active. In case of restarts, the mirroring gets starts again. Or you can do a scheduled end where you can say, you can either give a specific time when you want the mirroring to end, or you can say the option now where the where CDC would continuously look for changes and when it finds that there are no more changes coming in, it would stop the mirroring. Uh, you also have the option of giving a specific log position, uh, but however, that would have to go into the details of the logs where you would manually go to the logs and say replicate up to this position. So that would be the least used option. So let's go to continuous and then click on OK. So as you can see, the first thing it goes to is a refresh so that it is refreshing before the mirror. You can see the state over here which says refresh before mirror. So once a refresh is done, then it is going to go to the mirror state where it is continuously looking for changes. So the refresh is completed and now it has gone to the mirror stage. So in when it's mirroring, CDC is continuously looking for changes and any change which it detects on the source is automatically uh, pushed to the target. Let us now test out our mirroring which is occurring on the sales table by opening SQL Server and let's run the simple query and let's start. So this says 104 rows were moved from the database IIDR test 01, I'm sorry, the database IIDR test 03 to IIDR test 01. Now, if you notice over here, there are two databases over here, IIDR test 01 and IIDR test 03. IIDR test 03 and IIDR test 01 are copies of each other, except that test 01 has no data, test 03 has all the data. Now the reason why we are given it over here is so that you can play around with CDC as much as you want and so that you can test everything which you want on these two data sets. Now that finishes having uh, testing the uh, that finishes testing the replication on the SQL Server database. The next part would be to go check uh, whether the replication has actually inserted records into the DB2 target. For that, we'll have to open IBM Data Studio, which is next. Let me close this. No. Now let's test the mirroring which we have activated on the sales schema. For this, first I'm going to launch IBM Data Studio. I'm going to click on Start, go to All Apps, and I'm going to launch the Data Studio 4.1.2 client. Let's give it a couple of seconds to launch. And once it has opened up, let's expand the local host section and there expand DB2. And then right click on the test01 database and click on connect. For the password, you would use the password which was supplied to you for logging into the instance. Click on OK. Now let's click on tables. Let's go to the sales.currency table, right click on that and click on data, browse data. Now, as you can see, there are no records in your target. Now let's go ahead and insert some records into the source. Now in your source, if you notice, you have two databases, IIDR test 01 and IIDR test 03. IIDR test 01 is the database on which you have your application active. IIDR test 03 is a copy of IIDR test 01 but with all of the data which are which is there for you to play around with so that is explore all the different possible combinations of replication. Now I'm going to take the data from IIDR test 03 and copy it to IIDR test 01 which so basically this is going to act as an insert into IIDR test 01. Let's execute this. So now we have 105 records which were inserted into IIDR test 01. Now let's go ahead and look at the DB2 side of things. So we already confirmed that there were no records before this insert, I mean bef uh, before the replication happened. Let's go ahead and right click on currency and click on data, browse data. As you can see whatever was inserted over there in your source has been replicated to your target. I encourage you to go ahead and explore multiple different combinations you have databases which are available with multiple records over here. You have the system to play around with 
um, and you have SQL Server and DB2 available. Go ahead and test all possible combinations for the replication. We are here if we need any help. Thank you.